Welcome to part two of my main stage looping tutorial. In part one, we covered basic uh, looper setups and settings to get a couple of loopers running at one time. In this section, we're going to cover some more complex audio routing and also how to set up your songs and patches so that you can do one seamless performance with one set of loopers but be changing songs as you go throughout a concert. As I said in part one, it's very important to note if we're at the concert level, the song level, or the patch level. We're going to start up here at the concert level uh, where we left off before. As you can see here, we have three channels, three audio channels, with one loop plugin, one loopback plugin on each channel. They're being fed from bus one and feeding out to output one two. And as you saw in the last video, it's a pretty simple way to get up and running. But if you have more complex uh, audio routing needs, uh, there's a little bit more setup you can do. The first problem I would like to solve is click. The way this is working, I start a song, it's got a tempo, I need the click to tell me when to start and stop recording. But obviously I don't want my audience or my recording to have the click in it, so I need a separate way to get click. You can see there's this metronome track right here. If you click up here in the settings, you can actually choose to show metronome or not. So if you're not seeing the metronome, click right there to show the metronome channel strip and make sure it's showing here. One of the most simple ways to do this is just by panning. You can pan the metronome to one side of the stereo field and take the output of the other to the board. It's not great, it's going to mess. If you have stereo effects and things, you're going to lose some of that. But you can wear headphones, hear the click in one of your ears, and the audience will only hear uh, the sound without the click. So that's a very simple way to do it, but it's not the best way to do it. Uh, that also works if you have an interface with only two outputs, two main outputs, because there's no other way to do that. If you're like me and have an interface with more potential outputs, you can click here. I have multiple other outputs to work with. I can run my headphones on outputs 7 and 8 and give myself a perfect stereo feed with a click and then have an output 1 and 2 sending the main stereo signal going to the audience or to a recorder. So one way I like to set that up is by creating a few more buses. If you come here to auxiliary, you can set input bus, I'm going to do two for clarity's sake, and I'm going to create two buses, two stereo buses. It'll warn you that you're creating a strip at the concert level, go ahead and do it anyway. So here we have our two buses. One will take input on bus two, and we'll go ahead and right click and change the other to bus three. This first one we are going to call our mix. This is going to contain everything. This next one we are going to call mix and click. And we are going to set these outputs differently as I was discussing. Your mix, you want it to go to output one and two. Mix and click, you want to send to output seven and eight in my case, or whichever output is running to your headphones. You can even do multiple of these buses. The first trick is to make the mix send to mix and click actually at 0 dB. So the mix will be playing through mix and click uh, at the exact same volume that it is going to your output. The other trick is to come over here to your metronome channel instead of outputting it to output 1 and 2, I will actually output that. I could do it to 7 and 8, or I will actually uh, bus it straight into here, into bus 3. And that way it's summed right here. There are a couple ways you can set that up, but the main reason I'm having these multiple buses is that I can't, for example, say I don't have any sends on output 1 and 2. So if everything's sent to output 1 and 2 and I wanted to duplicate that on out a different output, there's not really a mechanism to do that in main stage. So by grouping all my 
mix in this bus here, I have a little more control of duplicating it to an output 7 and 8, which also includes the click. One thing you need to also change here is all my loops and sounds still route to output 1 and 2. I need to go ahead and update those to output directly to my mix bus, which is bus 2. You can even see the nice name right there. So now all my loops will output directly to the mix right here, and that mix will be combined with a click on this channel going to a separate headphone output. One other trick, and I use this specifically to allow muting of audio feeds into the loop. Right now, everything feeds the loop through bus one directly. But what if you are performing with a vocalist and you want to be able to selectively loop that vocalist? For instance, you're doing verses that you're recording while they're singing vocals. But later on the song, in a bridge perhaps, you may want to actually loop their voice in. So you would like a mute control for that. The way to do that is by creating two more buses. I'm going to come up here. Again, select bus four. Create two tracks. And I'm going to call one of these keys and the other one drums. That's just the simple example I'm going to go with. You can create as many of these as you like. Oftentimes I have a guitar, keys, drums, and vocal if I'm performing with a vocalist. And that way I can choose what is currently being looped. So I will call one keys and I will call the other drums for a simple example. So now that we have our key and drum buses set up, we need to set up the routing on them correctly. Keys are inputting on bus four, which is fine. We want drums to be on a separate bus. So we will go ahead and change it to bus five. Right now you can see they're both outputting to outputs one and two, which kind of defeats the purpose. We are going to monitor all our keys instruments through this channel and all our drum instruments through this one. So they will need to output to bus 2 to be picked up by our main mix. So I will change the output from 1 and 2 to mix on both of the key and the drum channels. And again, you can have as many of these monitoring auxes as you need for different instrument groups that you may want to turn on and off. So now that that's set up, we need a way to send this signal for the keys and the drums to these loops. Remember, the loops are taking bus 1 as an input. So we will come here, send to bus 1 from both the keys and the drum channel, or as many channels as you need. We will go ahead and turn the input, or the send on those channels, up to 0 dB, so they're getting the exact same volume as they are off the channel. and one trick we will do later is to automate the mutes on these. So you can see I just turned them off. So here you can actually turn on and off the send. So if I wanted to record keys in my loops doing different sections and overdubs, but not record the drums while the drums are playing, I would have this drum send muted. But if I wanted to do the opposite and record drums while the keys play different parts, I would have the keys muted and the drums turned on. Or I could have them both turned on and anything I play is getting recorded as uh, the loops are set. So now that we have our key and drum buses set up properly, we can come down to our patch and send our instruments to those buses so that they can be routed correctly. If you look here on the left side, we'll move from the concert level to the song level and down to the patch where I have a drum sound set up on the lower portion of the keyboard and a piano up high. This is a demonstration of two instruments you might want to separate and control going to the loops. So if we scroll over and look at our tracks for the drums and for the piano, they're both going directly to output one and two and directly to bus one on the sentence. This is not what we want. We want them to follow the mix, buses, and sends like we had set up earlier. 
So we will go ahead and take the output of the drums, send them to the drum bus directly, and we will do the same thing with the piano, but we will go ahead and send that to the key bus. We don't need any sends on either channel for looping since that is taken care of over here on the drum and key bus. They're both sending bus one. So now you can see as I play keys, the key bus is activated. Its output is bus two, which is the main mix. And its output is also being mixed in with mix and click. And if we press play, you can see that our click is only going into output seven and eight and not our main mix. And also with the drums, if I play drums, you can see they're hitting the drum bus, not the key bus, and it's getting into our mix for monitoring and mix and click for monitoring in our ears with the click. Now if you notice, you're not seeing any signal here in the loopback plugin. Let's go ahead and clear this loop. If we press record, you can see that the signal is getting in there. So now we're actually getting signal in that loop. They're, your, your loop channels do not have any output of their own that they're monitoring through. They are only playing back things that are recorded in a loop. And just to clarify, the things that are recording that are bus one, which is fed from these mutable sends right here. So as this stands, this is our basic routing. We have a way to turn keys on and off and drums on and off into the loops. We have a way for audio to get out to a recorder or to our audience. And then we have a way for us to monitor our mix and our click one of the things that is most powerful about this setup is that you can have multiple sounds set up. So I can control C copy this patch, control V paste it. So I have the same two sounds, which are only at the patch level. I can go ahead and use this channel strip to pick a different sound. Say I could pick a roots kit instead of the Brooklyn kit I had before. And over here, instead of a piano, I could do something like pick a rock organ. Now, since the loop plugins are here at the concert level, I can loop a sound with the piano and come down here and switch to organ and then loop that over top. So I can have a couple of sounds that I can step through and I can build a song quickly. The same set of loopers is going to be active for all of these songs. And I can just have these patches send to the buses that I need them. I can mute whatever I need to in the loop. And I can also just uh, build a wide variety of sounds, vocal effects, everything. One other interesting note is these are at the patch level. I can also create strips at the song level. If there's one strip that I need, or one sound that I need to go through an entire song, I can create at the song level. Uh, for instance, if I was singing and needed one vocal sound, one effect the whole song, but needed multiple guitar sounds and piano sounds, I can have the piano sounds change with the patch and have my vocal sound up here at the song level so I don't have to copy it every single time I want to do that. Uh, like I stated before, knowing to put most of your looping and routing here at the concert level, uh, anything song specific here at the song level, and then patches as you need to change them at the patch level is the key to having a well-organized project that lets you play songs with a lot of sounds. Everything's programmed and set up so that when you hit your sound, you know exactly what you're getting, and you're not having to do a lot of copying. The interesting thing about this is since we're pressing play and having the tempo set for us, we can, with each song, set the exact tempo that we want. So song one can be tempo 155, 
control C, control V, I can paste that song into a new song and have this song is really slow, this song is a different time signature for the click, and your loopback plugin, since they're all synced to the master main stage clock, will all pick up those settings. So as I change, you can see right here, if I turn the metronome on, you can see my mix and click is slow, and if I change back to song one, that click speeds up. So as you can see, MainStage offers a lot of flexible routing that lets you set up your audio exactly how you need it. It can be tough to set up at first, but once you have all the pieces in place, you can set up a very flexible setup that allows you to do multiple songs and multiple patches and really work your way through a performance uh, with very minimal setup time. Really, once you have your looping set up like you need it, it is a simple matter of getting the right sounds you need for a given song setting the right song tempo and time signature, and just doing your performance. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I know there's a lot of tiny setup details that can be easy to get wrong, and a lot of this is really to your taste and your setup needs, so please feel free to comment, and I'll try to help best I can. Uh, thanks, and look forward to the next video, which will be covering how to set up some of the basic mapping on MainStage.